To the NBA, where teams are expecting the league office to provide guidance right around the 1st of June that will allow franchises to start recalling their players who've left their cities in a first step towards a formal ramp up in hopes of resuming the season. So here's sort of what it looks like. Teams expect the NBA to issue guidelines around the same time for how to handle recalling their players. They expect that larger workout groups will be allowed in these guidelines as a three step process for the recall. Those steps being an initial two week recall, a quarantine period, then individual sessions, and eventually a formal training camp before a potential return to play before the end of July. Jared Dudley was on a podcast and he had these thoughts on what it'll look like if they're able to come back and play. I think that people are getting a misconception. If not, it's going to be a bubble in the, in, in a sense of, hey, here's going to be your your hotel where you stay at. Here's going to be the gym where you're playing at. But you will be allowed to leave. Michelle Roberts have said it, and even Adam Silver on the conference call. Now, just because you leave, you know, like if we're going to give you that leeway, if you come back with Corona, you can't play. So you, we're going to be tested all the time, and so it would be smart of teams. So like. Braun, AD, and all the top guys that we have, we'll be wrapping them in bubble and not letting them go anywhere. Let's just be honest. They can't leave. And so, um, and, and you would want that to be a team rule. It's all so fascinating what they're trying to get done here. And here's Woj with us. Uh, Woj, what are you hearing about this? And, 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 and the idea, if they're already putting these plans into place, it feels to me like a good sign as we sort of work towards trying to get the season picked up. What are you hearing about how they're going about doing it? Yeah, Greeny, listen, barring something unforeseen at this point, the NBA and its teams expect they're going to return this season and play. And, and the first step in that process is going to be uh, around June 1st, give or take some time, the league telling teams, recall your players uh, into your cities, quarantine them, and then let's get moving on the individual workouts and eventually ramping up to uh, essentially a second training camp and then teams uh, from that point would be off to those campus slash bubble environments if there's one or two of them uh, and then the season would resume. So we're talking about at some point in the next couple of weeks these decisions getting made and the action starting to go into place and then we get to the fun part which is if they do come back and play what will they do what conversations are they having about what the rest of the season and the playoffs might look like. Well, that's a conversation ongoing between the league office and the Players Association about what's the format going to be. Regular season games, are they going to bring all 30 teams back? Are they going to have a play-in tournament for the final couple uh, seeds in the Eastern and Western Conference? Um, all of that's got to be collectively bargained between the players and the league. Adam Silver wants to have seven-game series in the playoffs. He doesn't want to have shortened series early on. Uh, he wants to try to legitimize the champion as much as he can. I think the biggest uh, conversation going on among players and teams are how many teams are going to have an opportunity to jump into the playoffs, into those 16 teams. What would a potential play-in tournament look like? Because, Greeny, they, they've got to incentivize teams to come back to play their key players uh, to be motivated and to get fans' interest in this. And that could be at the cost of teams like Memphis and Dallas and Orlando, you know, seven, eight seeds, you know, who have, you know, have a pretty good distance between them and the rest of uh, 9, 10, and on in the, in the uh, conference seedings. And they've outplayed those teams significantly, but might have to still play more to get into the postseason. Boy, I, I mean, with all the things we've talked about, that is an argument I'd love to have. I would so much rather be arguing over whether that's fair and that's reasonable than all the rest of this. Let's hope that that's what we wind up getting soon. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.